What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to the next video, we got two more limits to solve. Notice that both of these limits are in similar formats because they both contain this square root of x. So the first limit, we got the limit as x approaches nine of three minus root x over nine x minus x squared. Notice we can't plug in nine directly because the denominator would be zero. The numerator would be zero as well. So what we're going to have to do is figure out some kind of other method. And this one in particular, I'm gonna actually show you three different methods to do it. Now, the first method you can use is rationalization. So you would rationalize this uh, numerator here. Usually you're rationalizing wherever there's a square root. So if I rationalize this, this would be three plus root x over three plus root x just multiplying it by the conjugate of this. And then we have to multiply the denominator by the conjugate as well. So we're like taking this expression, multiplying it by one. And so what we'll end up having, when you're taking something, multiplying it by its conjugate, we know that we just have to multiply the sides. So we'd have nine minus root x times root x is just x. So we'd end up with nine minus x at the top. And then at the bottom, we gotta keep these two separately. And actually what I'm gonna do for this one is factor out an x. So we'd end up with nine minus x right there. So I took out an x from this, ended up with nine minus x, and then this here, we got three plus root x, we're keeping that separate. And the reason why I factored out that x, hopefully you could see the nine minus x is now cancel out. I'm just left with a one up top. Uh, so now, we can plug in this nine here. So this would end up being nine. This would end up being the square root of nine, which is three. Three plus three is six. Six times nine, 54. So the answer ends up being one over 54. So that is the rationalization way. So not too bad at all. The second way you could do this is with a change of variable. So I'm gonna erase this over here. What we can do is we can let m equal the square root of x, but then what we have to do is we have to change everything else to be in terms of m. So notice that if we square both of these sides, we'd have m squared equals x. So now we have something to plug in for this x. And then if we square both sides again, we'd have m to the power of four equals x squared. And now we could sub in for this, x squared. So we have something to sub in for that, for that, and for that. And it's gonna be in terms of m. And then as this x approaches nine, notice as x approaches nine, then m is gonna approach what? Three. Because as x approaches nine, we'll have the square root of nine, which is three. So as x is going towards nine, m is going towards three. So we can now sub in for that, x approaching nine. So if we do that, we'll have the limit as m approaches three of three minus m all over nine m squared minus m to the four. So this limit and this limit are the exact same thing. They're gonna give you the same result. And what's kind of nice about this one is there's no square roots to deal with. We can just simply factor that bottom. So first step would be take out an m squared and we'd be left with nine minus m squared. And then notice that's a difference of squares. So we'd have the limit as m approaches three of three minus m over m squared, three minus m, three plus m. So notice these three minus m's cancel out now. And now we could plug in three for m. We'd end up with three squared, which is nine. Three plus three is six. Nine times six is 54. So we end up with one over 54, which is what we got the first time as well when we did it with rationalization. So that's another method. Me personally, I prefer for this specific limit, probably the rationalization way that uh, that we did it. But for this one, I'm actually gonna prefer this way. I'm gonna bring this method back here because rationalizing here 
if we multiply by root x plus 3, the, both the numerator, uh, both the denominator and then the numerator, notice how much foiling we're going to have to do, and it's just going to get messy. Um, so it really does depend on the limit. It takes a little bit of experience to uh, know which method is best, but you may have your own preference. As long as you're getting the correct answer, that's what matters. Um, so that's the second method, change a variable. And then the third method is actually just by factoring. So what we can do is we can leave everything as is. We got 3 minus root x. We could take out an x and we'd be left with 9 minus x. And then looking at this, you may not think that that's a difference of squares because it's 9 minus x. Usually when we're doing a difference of squares, we're factoring a difference of squares, there's an even number in the exponent. So like for example, 9 minus x squared, that would be 3 minus x, 3 plus x. Or if it was 9 minus x to the 4, 3 minus x squared, 3 plus x squared. Or if it was 16 minus x squared, or x to the power 4 minus 16, et cetera, et cetera. That exponent is usually, um, that exponent is usually even. But here, what we can actually do is we can do a difference of squares on this as well. It would just be 3 minus root x, 3 plus root x. Because the square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of x is just the square root of x. So we could say 3 minus root x times 3 plus root x. The reason why we're not used to doing it this way is because when we're factoring, we're not factoring in terms of, we're not getting the factors to have roots in them. Right? But that's when we're dealing with factoring. But you can factor this as just ugly factors, but nevertheless, even if they're ugly factors, notice now that cancels out. And now we can make a direct substitution of 9. So this would be 9, this would be 6, this whole bracket would be 6, so we'd end up with 1 over 54. Right, so uh, three different uh, ways. To be honest, I would even probably do it like this, just because I would notice that I can do that. But uh, I've probably done more limits than you have over my lifetime. So to... Um, to be more safe, I would have probably, uh, if I was in your steps, if I was in your shoes, I'd probably rationalize this. But again, everyone might have uh, different ways to do it, whatever you're comfortable with, as long as you're getting that 1 over 54 answer. Now, for this one, um, the, the method number 3, you can do on this as well just plain factoring it. Notice that x minus 5 root x plus x, we could factor that to be root x minus 2 root x minus 3. Okay, but again, it's a little more difficult to tell that you can do that. I can tell because I've just dealt with these limits so many times. But uh, in your shoes, it might be tough to tell how you can go from here to here. If you actually FOIL all this out, you'd end up with that right there. And notice the root x minus 3's cancel out. And now we could plug in that uh, square root or uh, that 9. Because notice if we plug in 9 initially, that denominator will be 0. But if we get rid of that factor in the denominator, we could plug in that 9 here. Root 9 is 3 minus 2 is just 1. So the answer to this limit is just 1. So that's one way, a little bit less intuitive. Rationalization, I wouldn't recommend. That's gonna get really messy as well. So I, for this one, I actually recommend doing a change of variable. So we can let m equal root x. That means m squared equals x. And notice that we don't have to deal with that x squared like we did here, which is nice. We don't have to have like an m to the power of four. Notice there's no x squared here. And then as x approaches nine, m is going to approach 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. So if we do all of these substitutions, we'd end up with this limit. Limit as uh, m approaches 3 of m squared 
minus um, 5m plus 6 over m minus 3. And now look how much nicer this limit is to work with than that one. And now from here, it's obvious to tell that we could factor that, uh, that numerator. Versus without the substitution, it's kind of tougher to tell. And then notice these cancel out. Now we could plug in 3 for m. We end up with a positive 1, which is the same way the same answer that we got with the uh, first method. So you may run into limits like this. These can be a little bit tricky, especially if there's multiple ways to uh, solve them. But uh, yeah, just be on the lookout for these types of limits that have the square root of x's.